With so many classic compressors to choose from, why do studios worldwide have two of these? This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Hi folks, I'm Mike. And I hope you're well. So why do so many studios use the Distressor? Well, because it's incredibly versatile and yet fairly straightforward to use once you know how. They use two because they want to use them in stereo. Now, the particular Distressor I'm using today is a plug-in from Universal Audio, and I've chosen this because it's incredibly authentic to the original hardware, and you currently get 83% off. Check out the link in the description down below for that. Now, I will have some real world examples towards the end of the video. You can certainly use the chapter features to skip forward to those, but I don't recommend it. I reckon it's really important that you understand what happens with this compressor in terms of the controls, because it's a little bit different to some other compressors. Let's dive in and take a look at that now. Right away, this compressor gets pretty interesting with just the attack and release controls, but before before we get into those, I just want to explain that any gain reduction we do achieve is shown at the top with the gain reduction lights. Let's just take a quick look at those now. Now, of course, to get any gain reduction at all, we're going to need to have our signal above the threshold. But you won't see any threshold control here. Instead, we use the input gain to push our signal up above the fixed threshold. Now, of course, as we do make adjustments on this compressor, we will get changes in volume and loudness. And you may want to compensate for that with the output control, the output gain control, I should say, on the right hand side over here. So what's so special about these attack and release controls? Well, first of all, with both of these controls, if we set them to zero, that's the fastest possible setting for those controls. Now with the attack control, the fastest attack is 50 microseconds. That's pretty fast and goes up to 30 milliseconds. However, if we have it set to zero all the way down, we can get even faster attack times if we're using the 2 to 1, 3 to 1 and 4 to 1 ratio. So we've got some sort of specific behavior to this compressor right away there with the attack control. Likewise, with the release control, if it's set to zero, we get a release time of 0 0.05 seconds. However, if we go all the way up to 10, it goes up to 3.5 seconds, but we can achieve even longer times than that, up to 20 seconds if we're using the 10 to 1 ratio. So it seems like the ratios on this compressor have some specific behaviors too, huh? Just like with the original hardware, we can click on the ratio button here to cycle through the various ratio values. But it's much easier, in fact, on the plugin because we can actually directly select any of the ratios with our mouse. Now, not only are we changing the ratio here, but we're also changing some other characteristics of the compression depending on which ratio we select. And even if we select the one-to-one -one ratio, so there's no compression at all, we are in fact still adding some saturation. We're going to look at that in a little bit more detail later on. With the two-to-one and three-to-one ratios, we have a soft knee applied. Now, if you don't know what that is, essentially that means that we start to apply the ratio gradually at some point below the threshold and we reach its full extent at some point above the threshold, meaning we're gradually increasing that ratio to add more gain reduction depending on the level we're receiving. Now that knee is made softer with the four and six to one ratios. Then when we go to the 10 to one ratio, we've got something completely different. With this, we have something called an opto compressor emulation. Now, if you don't know what an opto compressor is, I'm not gonna go into the technology in detail here, but essentially think of famous compressors such as the LA-2A. And if we go ahead and set our attack to 10 and then our release to zero, they say that's a really good starting point to emulate something like an LA-2A. We can make adjustments still, but that, as I say, would be a starting point. Now, interestingly, with these types of compressors, the timing aspects 
can depend on the material we're feeding. And that's why I said earlier that with the release value here, we can achieve up to 20 seconds of release time depending on the material we're sending to the compressor. Finally, with the 20 to 1 and the nuke values here, we really have brick wall uh, sort of limiting here. So not much is getting, or if anything, is getting up above the threshold. I wanted to demonstrate to you how much more loudness we can get from this plugin without actually using the compression controls as such. I've got it set to the 1 to 1 ratio here. So any adjustments we make to attack and release are not going to make any difference at all. And I'm going to, alongside this, show a metering plugin. Okay. Now I'm going to bypass the plugin for a moment and play you a few seconds of this drum beat. Now notice there it's peaked at minus 1.44 at around about that second snare beat there. Let's turn the bypass off so we're now going to be listening through the plugin. And I'm going to play the same section again. And this time it's peaked at around about the same value, minus 1.39. I'm showing you this to demonstrate that I have adjusted the output control to make sure our peaks are very roughly matched. Now the thing that isn't matched now is the actual RMS, the average volume of what we're listening to. And it's really with that that we perceive loudness. And you're really gonna hear it and see it as I switch quickly between bypass and not bypass. So let's start off by listening to this drum beat through the plugin and then I'll bypass it and switch between the two. And you can hear quite a big loudness difference there. And it's a really great demonstration of how we can achieve loudness just by using saturation, which is being applied here with the one-to-one -one ratio setting. So this compressor uses a side chain for detection of the signal. In other words, it's got a separate circuitry which is listening to the signal and another circuitry where it's the compression is actually applied. And in the detector section, on this plugin and on the hardware, we can change the behavior of that circuitry. So for example, we can apply a high pass filter. So if I switch that on here, what's happening is we're applying a high pass filter at 100 Hertz with a 6 dB slope. But it's important to remember, it's not changing the overall sound, it's changing what can be heard by that detection circuitry. And by using this high pass filter, we're cutting out some of those low frequencies so the compressor is not reacting so much to them. Likewise, if we go to the second setting here, which is the band emphasis setting, we're getting a boost at six kilohertz. So now the compressor is gonna react a bit more quickly to those upper mid frequencies. So we can use that to control those a bit more. Now with the link setting, we're changing the stereo behavior. So normally what's happening is we've got two channels in a stereo signal, which are being compressed separately. But when we've got the link switched on, they're both gonna be compressed regardless of where the signal goes above the threshold, whether it's the left or right channel. So you can get different effects depending on which setting you have here. Now with the original plugin, or with the original hardware I should say, you could click on the detector button and cycle through the settings. You start off with a high pass, then the band emphasis, and then when you click again it combines the two. And if you keep clicking through you get different combinations of all three settings. But it is easier on the plugin because by holding shift on your keyboard you can just just select and deselect any of these three different settings and make different combinations of the three. <laughs> Unlike the detector section, the audio section does affect the actual sound. We've got three settings here. First of all, we've got a high pass filter. This is applied at 80 hertz with an 18 dB slope. So this is very useful for getting rid of low end rumble in your sources. And then we have two distinct 
distortion modes, disc two and disc three. With disc two, we are emphasizing the second harmonic. So we get something like an overdriven tube circuit kind of effect here. With disc three, we're emphasizing the third harmonic. So think a kind of a tape-like behavior with this. And we can combine either of these two distortion modes with the high pass filter by holding shift on our keyboard and clicking on the high pass filter. Now, before we finally look at our examples, I just want to remind you when you're ready to release your music to places like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, etc., don't forget to check out the link in the description down below for our sponsor, DistroKid. If you make use of that VIP link, you'll get 7% off of your first year of membership. In this example, I'm using a control on the plugin, which wasn't on the original hardware, and that is the mix control down here, where we can blend the original dry signal with the compressed signal for some parallel compression. Now I'm gonna use the bypass switch to switch between the original signal and the compressed signal. Let's have a listen starting off with the bypass button engaged. So you can hear there's a bit more life to the drums when we go through the distressor with these settings. It's kind of subtle, but hopefully you will have heard it. Now, if we press this mix, push this mix control all the way up so we're hearing nothing but the compressed signal, it sounds like this. This is going to make it a bit easier for us to hear as I adjust the attack and release. Starting off with the attack, it's a fairly long attack at the moment, so it's taking a little bit of time to respond. Have a listen to what happens to, particularly, say, the kick drum as I reduce this attack to a much quicker attack. really killing off that kick there it's losing all of its punch so i'm going to push that back up again to a fairly high setting now let's have a listen to what happens as we adjust the release control it's on a fairly fast release at the moment so we're hearing a lot of the tail of things let's hear what happens as we push it up And you can hear that's really where that added life that we were getting was coming from by making use of that release control and allowing it to kind of sustain, if you like, the tails of things like the snare and the cymbals and things. So this time I'm using the 10 to 1 Opto emulation here on an acoustic guitar with the basic settings I talked about earlier with the attack and release. I've also applied a high pass filter here to the detector circuit so it's not responding to the low end of the guitar so much and I've also applied the disc 3 setting in the audio section to emphasize the third harmonic. Now I'm also going to bring up a meter this time just to show to you that when I've got the plug-in bypassed and play you the first chord it peaks at around about nine decibels. Now when I turn the bypass off so we're listening through the plug-in I'll just play that first chord again and as you can see it's peak volume matched at nine minus nine decibels around about the same value but we are going to hear a loudness difference and that's coming from the compression itself so let's switch between the two starting off with this guitar bypass
So we're getting some nice gentle compression there, maybe 5 dB at the maximum of compression or gain reduction there. But I'm feeling it's a little bit more sparkly sounding, a little bit more lively sounding while still sounding relatively natural. On this occasion, I've used two distressers, one after the other on a vocal. The top one here is using a six to one ratio with a very fast attack and a fairly quick release. What that's doing is it's quickly crushing any transients like at the beginning of words and things before we go into the second compressor which is an emulation of an opto compressor happening here and this is a very much more gentle compression just to even the whole vocal out now i volume matched it again you may not believe this because the compressed version does sound louder its peaks are not louder though let's just have a quick listen to it uncompressed and I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn. Now compressed, it's going to sound like this. And I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about. Now that may sound weirdly sort of aggressive. You need to hear it in the context of the song. But in the context of the song, without any compression, the vocal was sounding pretty lost like this. I guess Superman Never really ever gave a damn It's there, but it just sounds a little bit lost and we could turn it up, but it may you know, start clipping or something. So we wanna make sure it doesn't do that, which is why we're using compression on this. And with the compression applied, it sounds like this. And I guess Superman Never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane The Daily Planet are the people there now I can't really impress upon you strongly enough to check out that link in the description down below for this plugin. I'm not sure how long this sale is gonna last for. I really don't know at all, um, but it's a huge savings. So definitely get hold of that and have this classic compressor in your arsenal of plugins for your productions. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.